Happy, Happy anniversary, you guys. We love our Lucy and Jim. Happy 70th anniversary. Congratulations, Congratulations Jim, Jim and Lucy. Lucy. And welcome, welcome to worship. worship. Happy anniversary. Welcome to worship. Congrats, Lucy and James. Welcome to worship. Congratulations, Congratulations Jim, Jim and Lucy. Lucy. Welcome, welcome to, to worship. worship. I'm from the back seat. <laughs> Congratulations, Congratulations, Jim and Lucy. Welcome, welcome to worship. worship. Congratulations, Jim and Lucy. Welcome, welcome to worship. Happy anniversary, Happy anniversary Jim and Lucy. Welcome to church. Welcome to worship. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> Jim and Lucy. 70 years. Welcome to worship. Congratulations, Jim and Lucy. Welcome to worship. To worship. Welcome to worship. Congratulations, Jim and Lucy. Welcome to worship. Oh. Congratulations, Jim and Lucy. Welcome to worship. Congratulations, Jim and Lucy. Welcome, Welcome to, to worship. worship. <laughs> Whatever he said. <laughs> Congratulations, Jim and Lucy. Welcome to worship. Congratulations, Jim and Lucy. Welcome to worship. Welcome to worship. Good morning, friends and neighbors. We welcome you and we say good morning. Today is Pentecost Sunday, the day that pastors wear red and believers and followers wear red, and we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the church. Many call it the birthday of the church. But in all that, we remember that the power of the Holy One comes upon us. So as we prepare our hearts for worship, sit back and relax. Prepare your hearts for the God's presence to come into us, as you listen to this musical selection. Friends, it's good when the church prays together. The Lord likes to hear the body of believers lift their voices in prayer. We pray as a church many times and individual, individually oftentimes too. But during this time as we worship virtually from our different homes and places, let us join and unite our hearts in a word of prayer. Afterwards, at the conclusion of that, we'll be reciting the Lord's Prayer. And I invite you to join in with that. If you're uncomfortable with it, you can follow along the words that will be projected on the screen. Please join your hearts. Gracious and holy God, we give you thanks for the gift of the day that we can gather together to worship. 
to remember your holy presence coming upon the church, to breathing in the Holy Spirit, the wind of the Spirit of God. We pray for ourselves in these difficult times of pandemic as we continue to shelter in place, awaiting the newness and the, whatever the new normal is. And may we be reminded that with your presence, we'll face that with confidence and with faith. We lift up those who are struggling in their sheltered and they're, they're lonely and they can't interact with family and friends. We pray for those who are hospitalized or facing hospitalizations that have had to be set aside until the pandemic is eased and they can obtain that more optional health care. We pray for your church as we reopen and what the new normal will be. May we be faithful leaders, remembering the health and the safety of our congregants, as well as continue to be witnesses to a struggling world. All this we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And amen. Good morning, boys and girls. Last week we were talking about the ascension of Jesus, about how he went into heaven. Today we're sort of hearing the second part of that story. So Jesus tells his disciples that God is going to send them a present, and that's going to give them the ability to share with others the good news of Jesus. And it's kind of like a birthday. We call it Pentecost. It's like the church's birthday. And birthdays are really fun because we get to have cake, and we open presents, and we get to dance, and we get to party. Today's Bible lesson talks about a time in Jerusalem, and the disciples are waiting there just like Jesus had asked him to. So they're in this room and suddenly there's this big gust of wind and this big sound and these little flames sort of appear over everybody's head. Not touching the hair, but just sort of floating on top. And they get really excited and they start telling people, this is what Jesus promised, it's here, here's the present, let's go tell people about this. And so they start to tell all these people from different countries and all of a sudden they're speaking these different languages and all these people can understand what they're saying. And the Holy Spirit has come to them to give them this ability to share with others about Jesus. And the disciples were really excited about that, and they did share it with everyone. And the really amazing thing is that it was only the beginning of the church. So the disciples had done their part, and they were doing really great things, and the church started doing really great things. And people started to meet, and they started to sing, and they started to study together. And the exciting part about that it's not that it was sort of the birthday of the church, but also we're able to take that now and share that goodness of Jesus with others. We're able to continue that celebration. Will you guys say a quick prayer with me? Dear God, thank you for the church and for Jesus and for the Holy Spirit. We are here to celebrate the beginning and all the good things to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, the work of the church is a global work initiated by local churches. At Gross Point United Methodist Church, we're blessed that so many people use online giving and have been faithful, faithfully fulfilling their pledges and offerings. But it's more than just collecting money for, for work of the mission and the ministry of Jesus Christ. It's a spiritual discipline that blesses us as it does the work. So would you please pray with me for the tithes and the offerings that we receive, that they be faithfully used, and that the hands that have returned them would find joy and thankfulness in, in the returning of what was God's. Would you please join me? Sing we know with joyful voices, praises to
as we receive our tithes and offerings, and we're called to be good and faithful stewards, we pause to give thanks. So would you please pray with me that the tithes and offerings received by the church would be blessed by the Lord and fruitful for the kingdom. Would you please pray with me? Gracious and holy God, for the gifts of tithes and offerings and blessings that you bestow upon us, that we return to you with thankfulness and with sure and certain hope that you'll bless these and that they would further the mission and the ministry of Jesus Christ, transforming lives, bringing peace and joy and hope to a world that's troubled. Bless these tithes and offerings, the hands that return them to you, and the lives will be transformed through them. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Today's scripture is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were staying. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all of these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, the, the text that we just heard, Acts chapter 2, where the people are gathered in the temple and suddenly there's a loud wind and something like tongues of flame come down and light upon individuals around the congregation. They began to speak in languages other than their own. It's a confusing time and some in the, in the assembly accused those who were speaking in foreign tongues that they were drunk and talking out of their heads. And others understood that no, it was the holy presence of God. This has been a bit of a struggle for the for the church since that day. There continue to be people who don't understand it and are afraid of it. There are others that have different views of what that experience might be, what the coming of the Holy Spirit means and how it's manifest in us as believers. Many think that the presence of the Holy Spirit is manifest in speaking in a language that is not understood by anyone. And it, People will lean on that text along with Paul's letter to Corinthians to support that. I, myself, and the Methodist Church typically see that as something that doesn't fit for us. But, friends, I would ask that we, that we give grace. That whether we agree with the manifestation of the Holy Spirit being speaking in tongues other than a language that people would other, uh, understand, or if it's speaking in a tongue, a, a language that we haven't learned, suddenly I could speak French or Russian or Chinese by the power of the Spirit. That let's not quibble over that. Let's give grace and room for those who believe that the manifestation of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost did allow and enable people to speak in a language that wasn't understood. Let's leave room for others who saw it as suddenly people could speak in a language, a foreign language, that others would understand and hear the message of Christ in their own language. But rather than divide the, the church of Christ over such an issue, and certainly we have more issues than we care to admit to, could we not find grace enough to admit that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and I, it changes us? And for one, it might mean that changes of the ability to speak in some God language. And I've encountered people like that, and if that helps them in their faith, I will celebrate that. Others find it repugnant. Let's give grace. But in, in finding this common ground, might I suggest that instead of dividing the church globally and dividing the church within the church, how about if we look a little deeper? and seek common ground. As I look around the world, I see too many times and occasions and evidences that the world has stopped finding common ground 
And we park ourselves in one camp and another camp here, and we never are the united body of Christ. And to that end, I would suggest to you and submit to you that maybe what we might want to do is remember that when the Holy Spirit comes upon the church, you and I, that we are transformed. And maybe if we look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, where we find the fruits of the Spirit, the Spirit of the Holy One coming upon us, the fruitfulness of that presence manifest in us brings about our ability to live out those fruits. And what are those fruits? Let me refresh your memory. Galatians 5.22, the fruits of the Holy Spirit are love and joy, peace and patience, kindness and goodness, faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. Again, that's Galatians 5.22. Good place to mark that. So I invite you on this Pentecost Sunday to, to pray and seek God's holy presence, his Holy Spirit, that make us more loving, more joyful in times of challenge, more peaceful in the, cl the clamor of discord in this world, that we find ourselves better able to be empowered to be kind, to be good, to find strength in our faithfulness and that we might live that out Instead of fear and trepidation, have deeper faith. And that the power of the Holy Spirit being upon us gives us gentleness in challenging times. And we will be facing those. And in all things, may we certainly find self-control. So I invite you this year, this Pentecost Sunday, instead of worrying whether we speak in tongues or foreign languages, that we find the fruit of the Holy Spirit lived out and manifest in us. Love, joy peace and patience, kindness and goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. And maybe when we do that, we're better equipped to make disciples for Jesus Christ, to transform the world, to bring healing where there's hurt, light where there's darkness, hope where there's despair. Maybe in that, we find that true holy presence is in us. In conclusion, Paul speaks of faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. May the love of the Holy One be with you, and may the fruits of that love found in the Holy Spirit enable us to be more than we could imagine. And as we live into the tomorrows that we have, may we find that God is enabling us to be world transformers. Thank you, and God bless. May the Spirit of the Holy One be with you and bless you. Amen. Friends, as we conclude our worship service, may the power of Pentecost be with you. May that holy breath, the Ruha of the Holy One, be with you, that wind of the Spirit, enabling you to be loving and joyful, gentle, kind, all of those fruits, may you be transformed and may you be transforming. And may God, the Father, the Son, and that Holy Spirit bless and keep you, make his face to shine upon you, give you peace. And may you, empowered by the Holy One, transform the world. Be blessed, my friends, and be a blessing. Amen and amen. Good morning, welcome to Coffee Hour. First, a little bit of church business. I wanna thank you for responding to the survey about reopening the church. 106 people took the time to complete that survey and that is a fabulous response. Our average church attendance last year was 172. So having more than 100 people respond to the survey is really quite exceptional. I'll have more details about this in Tuesday's newsletter, so be sure to look for that. But I will say this for now. The big message from the survey is that you are feeling quite cautious about our reopening. You are very flexible about when to reopen the church and how you are willing to worship. That is all great, great news and very helpful to those who are making plans. The Church Council saw the survey results Wednesday night and talked at length about how to move us toward reopening. No firm decisions were made. 
but there is a sense that an outdoor service of some type may be our best option to begin. As always, if you have something to say about this, please be in touch with Ray, Kathy Lorenz, or Charlie Van Basler, who chairs our worship committee. One more bit of church business. Pub Theology is back virtually at 7 p.m. tomorrow as Ray continues his exploration of the story of Abraham. Watch for that link which will come in your email. Now, on to the fun stuff. Friday night, a whole gaggle of Methodists descended on Mapleton Avenue and Gross Point Farms to honk and wave at Jim and Lucy Evans, who were celebrating 70 years of marriage, all to each other. Jim and Lucy are 92 years old and married when they were 22. They are one of the many reasons why so many of us miss being together on Sunday morning. It was great fun shouting at them and seeing so many other familiar faces. Thanks to Lisa Evans Thomas for organizing that and giving us the chance to celebrate her parents. Say, Mom's the bloodline. Mom's the bloodline. <laughs> Smile on your face. Please be sure to let me know about other opportunities like this for members of our congregation. This is the sort of thing that helps us stay connected even when we're apart. And in other good news, Ben DeWitt is home from Kuwait, not only back in the United States, but actually back in Gross Point Woods. Welcome home, Ben. And finally, last week while I was prattling on about healthcare workers, I totally overlooked the fact that one of those healthcare workers had just become a new mom. Emily Stolecki Stieber has a new baby girl, Evelyn Grace, who was born on May 18th. Greg and Kathy Selecki are the proud grandparents of this lovely little girl. Evie joins older brother Benjamin and dad Matt in the Stieber family. And yes, the grandparents were able to visit with the new baby because they had been quarantining quite faithfully. Congratulations to all. Can't wait until we get to see you all at church. Well, the hymn quiz is over, so that's it for today's coffee hour. Send me your news and we'll talk about it here next week. Until then, stay home and stay safe.